हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द मसल्स ऑफ द बैक नाउ व्हेन यू विल सी द मसल्स ऑन द बैक यू आर हैविंग द फाइव इंपॉर्टेंट मसल्स एंड दीज मसल्स आर अरेंज्ड इन द टू लेयर्स व्हेन यू विल डू द डिसेक्शन यू विल रियलाइज दैट ट्रेपेजियस एंड लैटिसिमस डॉर्सी आर द सुपरफिशियल मसल एंड दीज थ्री स्मॉल मसल्स आर डीप मसल्स सो लेट्स सी फर्स्ट व्हाट इज द ओवरऑल ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ द मसल्स ऑन बैक now the muscles of back are known as posterior axio appendicular muscles so there are two very important term that these are the muscles those are connecting the axis that means your midline bones like vertebral column with limbs that means appendicular area now when you will see the trapezius you have seen that trapezius insert on the scapula clavicle and it is attached in the midline with the vertebral column in the same way when you will see the latissimus dorsi it is also connecting the midline structure with the upper limb because you know that it insert on the humerus so whenever you are reading the muscles of the back you have this terminology axio appendicular muscle and because we are dealing with the back that's why they are known as posterior muscles of your back now these muscles connect the appendicular skeleton and axial skeleton that's why the name is axio appendicular and they are arranged in the superficial group and deep group now in this diagram you can see the back after removing the skin and fascia you are able to see a muscle which is a long and broad muscle which is known as trapezoid and this muscle is connecting this midline of your axial skeleton with the appendicular skeleton in the same way here you can see one more muscle now these two are the major muscles which are present on the posterior compartment now what are the names so i told you that superficial muscles are trapezius and latissimus dorsi and deep muscles are small which are levator scapuli rhomboidus major and minor now in this dissection you can see that this side we have removed the trapezius once you will remove the trapezius deep to the trapezius you are having three muscles from above downward this is levator scapuli then you will have rhomboidus minor and this is rhomboidus major muscle which lies deep to the trapezius but overall these all muscles are connecting the midline axial skeleton with appendicular skeleton so they all jointly known as posterior axio appendicular muscles so now let's discuss the trapezius in detail now trapezius is a flat triangular muscle now when you will see the trapezium trapezium is having the two triangles now if you will join the two triangles then you are having a shape is known as trapezium and when you are talking about one half of the muscle this one half is triangle triangular in nature so there are two muscles one is on the right side of the uh, midline that is on the right trapezium and on the left side of midline that is left um, trapezius muscle and when you will join both the triangles you are having a structure is known as trapezium that's why the muscle is known as trapezoid so there are two half right and left trapezius muscle and they together form the trapezium shape the trapezius covers the back of the neck upper part of the posterior chest wall now here you can see that this is your posterior area of the neck so my this posterior area of the neck is having the superficial muscle that is the uppermost fibers of trapezius and this muscle is having upper attachment or you can say it is anchor here on the skull bone that is occipital bone and when you will go lower down this is your chest wall so it is covering the upper part of the chest wall com completely and very small or partial it overlap the lower part of your chest wall or lower ribs now what is the origin of trapezius now when we will see the origin of the trapezius the origin comes from the skull and it comes from the midline of your posterior axial skeleton so there are two areas from where we are going to see the origin of trapezius first area is skull bone second is posterior part of vertebral column now what areas of the skull give origin to the trapezius so 
that is superior nuchal line now the when you will see the skull now here is the skull now on the skull this posteriorly placed bone is known as occipital bone now on the occipital bone this is the most prominent point and this most prominent point of your skull is known as external occipital protuberance what is that external occipital protuberance now from the external occipital protuberance you are having the lines which are going laterally from the occipital protuberance and this is known as uppermost or superior nuchal line so when you are reading the skull you are able to see that there are two lines which are arising or starting from the external occipital protuberance these are known as superior nuchal line or nuchal line and medial part of these lines will give origin to the highest fibers of your trapezius so trapezius will start taking origin from the external occipital protuberance and the medial part of superior nuchal line so here you can see that this is the origin from external occipital protuberance and from superior nuchal line so this these are the first two points now what is ligamentum nuchi now ligamentum nuchi is again a feature which is visible here in midline now in this diagram you can see that there is a white color band now this white color band which you can see here is known as superior nuchal line now this white band is actually connecting the spines of cervical vertebra now when you will see the spines of the cervical vertebra suppose this is the body of cervical vertebra and you know that there are bifid spines like this so this is a small spine of the cervical vertebra now this is the lower one this is the lower one now what will happen in between them you will have a ligament and this ligament is present in the midline which is connecting the spines and vertebral column and this is known as ligamentum nuchi and this ligamentum nuchi is here and this is a midline structure so whenever you are reading the ligamentum nuchi you have to keep this thing in mind that it is a midline structure which actually connects the spines but you have to keep this thing in mind my dear friends that it is a feature of cervical region it is not present in thoracic and lumbar region in the thoracic and lumbar region you are having interspinous and supraspinous ligaments but in cervical region you don't have interspinous ligament we are using the word ligamentum nuchi clear and this ligamentum nuchi is going to extend at spine of c7 vertebra so the lower end of the nuchi will end here at c7 vertebra so up to the c7 vertebra the origin in midline comes from the ligamentum nuchi and then you have a important bony landmark that is c7 spine now below the c7 the origin comes from t1 to t12 vertebra and supraspinous ligament of these t1 to t12 vertebrae so my dear students what we are able to understand that in nutshell the origin comes from the skull and from vertebral column now from the skull you have two points one is external occipital protuberance and superior nuchal line now what is the origin from vertebral column it starts from the ligamentum nuchi which is present on the posterior side of the cervical spine and it will reach up to the c7 then the spines and supra spinous ligament from t1 to t12 clear so the t12 is the lowermost origin of your trapezius clear now in these three diagrams if you will see the origin again what you are able to understand that this is showing the profile view now you are seeing the vertebral column from the side now here you can see that this is the green color area which is connecting the adjacent spines here but the important thing is that you can also feel this tip of the spines and these are the thoracic spines and 
Here, if you will see this area, the C7 is this. Now, the C7 is the part below that spines can be palpable. Above the C7, spines are not palpable. Why? Because you can see that there is a ligamentum nuchae present and this ligamentum nuchae is having a broad sheet and this broad sheet is actually connecting in upper part to the base of your skull and it extends till the C7. Anteriorly, this sheet is connecting the spines of your cervical vertebra and posterior border of this ligamentum nuchae is free. So, in this enlarged view, you can see that this free border of ligamentum nuchae give origin to the uppermost fibers of trapezius and the lower end of this ligamentum nuchae attached at upper border of C7. Now, this is the C7. So, if even you have the image based question in your exam and you have to identify this vertebrae, what, which number is this, you can identify on the basis of the lower attachment of this ligamentum nuchae and that is C7 vertebrae. So, my dear students, now you are having the idea of the ligamentum nuchae, which is a very important origin of trapezius. Now, what about the insertion? Now, whenever you are dealing with the upper limb bones, the trapezius come on two bones. One is clavicle and second is scapula. Now, when you will see the dorsal view of my right side, you can see that this is the spinous process and this spinous process continue with the acromion process. Now, this acromion process is making a joint here with the clavicle that is known as acromioclavicular joint. Now, when you will see the attachment of your trapezius, you have to divide the trapezius in the three part, uppermost fibers which are coming from the occipital bone, middle fibers which are horizontally placed and the lowermost fibers which are coming from the lower spine. Now, these upper fibers insert on the lateral one third of clavicle. Now, you know that we have divided the clavicle into the lateral one third and medial two third and on the lateral one third you have anterior border and posterior border. Anterior border is giving origin to the fibers of deltoid while this posterior border is receiving the insertion of uppermost fibers of trapezius muscle. And this is also forming the boundary of posterior triangle. Now, what is the posterior triangle? Now, when you see the side of the neck, you know that there is a very big muscle is known as sternocleidomastoid. Now, the triangle which is behind the sternocleidomastoid is known as posterior triangle and the posterior limit of the posterior triangle is upper fibers of trapezius muscle. Now, the middle fibers are horizontally placed and these fibers insert on the acromion process and spinous process. Now, this is the acromion process and you know that on the medial side, you are having the major insertion of your horizontal fiber along with the upper lip of the crest of spine, along with the upper lip of the crest of spine. What is crest? Crest is nothing but it, this posterior projection is known as crest of the scapula and this crest of the spinous process of scapula is having upper lip and lower lip. So, this upper lip or upper border is receiving the trapezius insertion. Now, we will move to the lower fibers. Now, these lower fibers will reach to the scapula and they cover this triangular root of your scapula. So, first they will cover this triangular root of the spine of scapula and they ultimately reach up to this point. Now, this point is also known as deltoid tubercle. So, what is the insertion of lower fibers? Lower fibers directed upward and they will reach to the medial end of the spine of scapula at deltoid tubercle. So, this is the medial border. So, this will be known as medial end. This is the lateral end and near the medial end, you are having a small area where you are receiving the lowermost fibers which are covering this root or triangular area of the spine and they are inserting at this point which is known as deltoid tubercle of scapula. Clear? Now, here you can appreciate the insertion in all around. 
Now when you will see this muscle, this is the origin. Now here you can see the anteriorly, you can see the clavicle where you have posterior one third of the clavicle receiving the upper fibers and these fibers continue on the medial border of the acromion process. Then you will come on this horizontal fibers which are approaching this area which is the medial border and upper border of the spinous process. Then you are having the fibers which are coming from the lower part and these lower fibers are actually overlapping the triangular area which is known as the root of the spinous process and ultimately they are inserting in this area and this area is known as deltoid tubercle. Clear? So, if you will fade out all the muscle area, now after fading the muscle, you can very well appreciate the bones which are taking part in the insertion. So, this is your posterior part of the clavicle, this is the medial border of the acromion process and this is the upper lip of your spinous process and this is your deltoid tubercle. So, this is what is the insertion of your trapezius. Now we will talk about the innervation. Now there are two innervation of the trapezius. One is the spinal part of spinal accessory now which is the 11th cranial now which is motor supply. Second is proprioceptive supply which is carried by the second, third and fourth cervical now ventral rami. Now in this diagram you can see that this is the long spinal accessory now. And this spinal accessory now is going into the trapezius from its deep part and supplying the motor component. While you can see that these are the spinal nerves which are coming out from the intervertebral foramen of cervical region and this is the third cervical now and this is the fourth cervical now and their branches are approaching this trapezius for the proprioception. Now what about the action of the trapezius? The upper fibers are responsible for the elevation of the scapula along with the levator scapulae that is also known as shrugging and it is also responsible for the movement of the head that is your extension and hyper extension of the neck. The middle fibers are responsible for the retraction along with the rhomboidus major and minor muscle while the upper and lower fibers along with the serratus anterior are responsible for the rotation of scapula in overhead abduction of the arm. So let us see these movements one by one in these video. So this is the first. Now when you will see the elevation, you can see that when you are doing this movement, the shoulder is going in upper direction. So why it is possible? Because these upper fibers are pulling the scapula along with your levator scapulae. So the scapula is going upward and that is known as elevation of the scapula. Clear? So, you can see this again that how this movement is take place that it is pulling the scapula in upper direction. The next is extension of the neck. Now, this is possible because of the movement of cervical part of vertebral column. So, when you will see downward this is known as flexion. This is your extension and this is known as hyper extension of the neck. So, here you can see that once both the side of trapezius will contract, your head is going posteriorly and this is known as hyper extension of cervical part of vertebral column or movement of head. Then you have retraction of the scapula. So what will happen? Now this is known as protraction of the scapula which is a function of serratus anterior and when the scapula is coming back, it is known as retraction of the scapula and retraction is mainly caused by the horizontal fibers of the trapezius which are carrying this scapula backward and this retraction is associated with the movement of the small muscles which are you can see the some part which is known as rhomboidus minor and major which are horizontally placed and they are deep to the trapezius. So, you can see the profile view that how the retraction will take place that you are taking the scapula posteriorly and this posterior movement of the scapula is known as retraction which is associated with the movement of rhomboidus major and minor muscle. Now, one is very important movement is forward rotation of scapula. Now, see this forward rotation of scapula will take place when you are doing the overhead abduction. Now see this is the routine abduction and once I will take my limb above the head above the 90 degree at that time scapula is rotating outward 
and this is known as forward rotation of scapula. Now, in this movement, if you will see that how the trapezius is helpful. So, this is not a purely action of trapezius, but this is a movement of serratus anterior as well as trapezius. So, now here you can see that scapula is starting from its neutral position and it is rotating in upward and outward direction. But along with that, you have to monitor the movement of humerus also that once the movement will start from this neutral position, after that the humerus is not only moving but the scapula movement is very high which is known as scapulohumeral rhythm. Now you can again appreciate this, this is what that this once the abduction will start after some movement of the scapula, this ma major movement will take place at the rotation of scapula. So, this rotation of scapula which starts from this point with the abduction, it is coming at this point. So, this is known as forward rotation is possible by the upper fibers of the trabecius along with the serratus anterior. So, they both are pulling this scapula in forward direction. So, in this uh, movement also you can purely appreciate the movement of the scapula and scapula is moving in such a way that you can see that this is the abduction. Now, once the abduction will complete, when you will have overhead abduction, this scapula is having major role in the to lift your uh, limb above the 90 degree. Now, we will move to the next muscle is known as latissimus dorsi. Now, what is the meaning of latissimus dorsi? Latissimi means wide or dorsi means back. So, it is a very broad muscle present on the back and it is a sheet like muscle and this is the back muscle. So, it also covers the your lower back particularly not the upper back. Upper back is covered by trapezius and lower back is covered by latissimus dorsi muscle. It has an extensive origin and a narrow insertion. So, when you will see this muscle, this is this much is the origin and it will converge laterally to a small insertion on the humerus. So, it is connecting the midline with the appendicular bone that is why it is also known as axio appendicular, it is also known as axio appendicular muscle. So, it is a large fan shaped muscle and it connects the humerus with trunk. Now, what about the origin of latissimus dorsi? Now, again it is arising from the back. So, when you will see the trapezius, we have seen it is arising from the skull and vertebral column. Now, when we are talking about the serratus, uh, this latissimus dorsi, this latissimus dorsi arising from the spine and below the spine you are having the hip bone. So, it is having origin from the midline posteriorly from vertebral column and it is having origin from the hip bone. Apart from this, in between you are having a fascia that is known as thoracolumbar fascia. So, the lower origin, this aponeurotic origin of the muscle merge with the thoracolumbar fascia. So, when you are reading the origin of the latissimus dorsi, you have to start the origin from the thoracic spine that is the lower 6 thoracic vertebrae. And we have seen that trapezius inserting till the T12. So, it is inserting till the T12 and we are saying that from the 6, the latissimus dorsi origin will start. So, but obviously, there is a overlapping of the origin of trapezius and latissimus dorsi in lower thoracic region. The spines and interspinous ligament of all the lumbar and sacral vertebrae. We have seen that in the cervical region, you are having ligamentum nuchae. Below that, you have the interspinous and ligaments and the spine. So, in below the T12 level, the muscle is arising in the midline from the spines and ligaments. Then we will move to the hip bone. On the hip bone, you have this iliac crest. Now, this iliac crest is having the outer lip, but not the complete outer lip. The muscle is arising only from the posterior part of the outer lip of iliac crest. Apart from that, it is also taking origin from the lower four ribs which interdigitate with external oblique aponeurosis and 
part of the inferior angle of scapula. So here you can see that this is the scapula. So this inferior angle is also giving some fibers of the latissimus dorsi and here you can see that these are the origin from the lower ribs and on the lower ribs you are anteriorly having this muscle is known as external oblique. So in this area you can see that the origin of latissimus dorsi interdigitate with origin of external oblique. So in nutshell how to remember I have to keep this thing in mind that in middle line from skull base to this posterior part of the lower vertebral column I have two muscles in upper part trapezius in lower part latissimus dorsi this trapezius ends at the T12 while the latissimus dorsi starts from T6. So between the T6 and T12 the origin of latissimus dorsi and trapezius overlap. After that what will happen below the T12 latissimus dorsi will take origin from interspinous areas and it also take origin from the iliac crest plus from the lumbosacral fascia. Apart from that it is also taking origin from this area where you have the lower four ribs. So the origin interdigitate with external oblique muscle and from scapula 2. Now here in this diagram I have already explained the arrangement of this part that is your interspinous ligament. Now in this diagram you can appreciate this first overlapping and this is the second overlapping. So you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever we are talking about the origin of latissimus dorsi the overlapping occurs at two sides what one is in the midline posteriorly and one is at the lower ribs on the sides. Now what about the direction of the fibers of latissimus dorsi muscle. Latissimus dorsi is having the lower origin in the back while the trapezius is having the upper origin of the on the back. So you have to first understand because this is arising from the lower part and it is going to insert in the upper part of the humerus bone which is here. So the fibers has to go in upward direction. So this is the first and basic thing which you have to keep in mind that whenever you are talking about the latissimus dorsi its lowermost fibers have to ascend while these fibers which are at the level of T6, T7 are almost horizontal. So there are two basic direction of the muscle fiber one is upward direction and second is horizontal direction. So the fibers ascend upward and laterally and lowest, lowermost fibers are almost vertical in nature and uppermost fibers are almost horizontal in nature. The fibers turn around the infrolateral border of teres major to form the posterior axillary fold. Now in this diagram you can see that there are two muscles which are going from posterior side. Now this is your origin of teres major from the scapula and this is your latissimus dorsi. Now what will happen that these both muscles are going from posterior side to the anterior aspect of humerus. So these both are coming from back to front and these both are contributing in this posterior axillary fold. So in the posterior axillary fold though the latissimus dorsi is a very broad muscle but the contribution is very small because the fibers are converging here. They are not having the broad sheet arrangement and the teres major is here which lies above the latissimus dorsi muscle. So when you will do the dissection you can appreciate both these muscles which are coming from the back and they are approaching the anterior side of humerus. Now what is the insertion of latissimus dorsi? The latissimus dorsi insert in the floor of bicipital groove or intertubercular sulcus. Now this bicipital groove is receiving three muscle. Now you know that there is a lateral lip, there is a medial lip and there is a floor. So on the medial lip you are having teres major, on the lateral lip you are having pectoralis major and on the floor you are having latissimus dorsi. So the mnemonic comes is lady between two major, lady between two major. So laterally you have pectoralis major and medially you have teres major 
and in the floor you are having insertion of latissimus dorsi. Now this is your lesser tubercle, this is your greater tubercle. So this groove is known as intertubercular sulcus and now here the most important thing which you can appreciate that these lower fibers are having the highest insertion. Why? Because twisting is taking place here. You can see the twisting. So, because of the twisting, what will happen that this higher fibers are inserting here at the lower part of the insertion. So, this is very important to understand that these lower fibers are having higher insertion and the higher fibers are having lower insertion in the latissimus dorsi in intertubercular sulcus because of the twisting of your muscle which is forming the posterior fold of axilla. Clear? So the lowest fiber insert in the higher level and higher fiber insert in the lower level. Now what is the nerve supply? Now it is supplied by the thoracodorsal nerve and thoracodorsal nerve is also known as nerve to latissimus dorsi which is having the nerve root value of C6 to C8 and it is a branch of the posterior cord of brachial plexus. Now what about the actions of latissimus dorsi? This latissimus dorsi is mainly responsible for the three actions at shoulder joint, adduction, extension and medial rotation of upper lip. Now what is adduction? Now this is abduction and this is adduction. So it brings the upper limb back towards the midline. Second thing is extension. Now why it is causing extension? Because it is arising from the back. So any muscle which is coming from the back, it pulls the limb posteriorly. So if I am having the flexion of my limb, the muscle will having the posterior origin and we know that origin remains fixed and insertion moves. So what will happen that when the muscle will contract, but obviously it will take my limb posteriorly. So it is known as extension of upper limb. So there are two sets of the extension will take place. First, that if I am having the flexed upper limb, it brings the upper limb to the neutral position and it also helpful in the hyper extension of my limb. So there are two extension. One is the extension of the flexed limb to the neutral position and second is hyper extension both caused by latissimus dorsi muscle and it is a medial rotator. Now why medial rotator because this muscle is coming on the anterior side. If the muscle is remain on the posterior side of the joint then it is a lateral rotator but because it comes on the anterior side by crossing this axilla that is why when the contraction will take place it will rotate medially. So this type of movements are responsible in swimming, rowing the boat, climbing and pulling. So when you will do the swimming, you are having the extension, then you will have hyper extension, followed by the overhead abduction, flexion, then you will have the extension, hyper extension. So this movement of extension and hyper extensions are caused by the latissimus dorsi muscle. Now the climbing of the rope. Now how the climbing of the rope occurs? Now see this climbing of the rope is a condition where the origin insertion will change. We are talking about that this is the origin and here is the insertion. But in case of the climbing, these will interchange. Now what will happen at the climbing? The origin part is moved towards the insertion. So what will happen that once you are having the upper limb fix with the rope, you pull your body upward. So the origin is become insertion because insertion is a point which remain fixed during the movement. So your humerus is become fixed and your trunk is moving upward. So when the trunk is moving upward, this is lifted in upper direction by this latissimus dorsi. So uh, when you are doing the climbing of the rope, you have to keep this thing in mind. Now in the climbing, upper limbs are pulling the trunk in upward direction. So the origin is become insertion and insertion is become origin. So in the climbing what will happen that humeral attachment is become fixed and it lifts the trunk in upper direction. It is helpful in the respiration also that is inspiration and expiration in inspiration lower fibers and in expiration 
rest of the part of this muscle. Now, here we will see the actions of the latissimus dorsi one by one. First is adduction and the reverse action of adduction is required in the climbing. So, how it will do? Now, this is your abduction. Now, it is taking the limb towards the your midline or near the body and that is known as adduction. And this adduction is associated with the action of pectoralis major. So, this pectoralis major and this latissimus dorsi both are bringing this upper limb towards the body and that is the adduction. But suppose we are talking about the climbing, then what will happen? This will become fixed, this point become fixed and the part of the body will go in upper direction. So, this is the important thing that if this part will go in upper direction, then the trunk will go in upper direction which is known as climbing. Now, the second movement is medial rotation. So, in the medial rotation, it is pulling the limb inside. So, it is medial rotation. You can see that it is rotating in the inner side. Then the third movement is extension of your upper limb. So, this is the one of the neutral position and this is the hyper extension. So, when you will do this movement, it is known as flexion extension. So, you can see that this is the extension where the limb is going posteriorly and then it is coming flexion followed by again extension. So, this is the extension of your upper limb. Now, there are two very important triangles. Those are formed by the latissimus dorsi. One is the triangle of pettits. It is known as lumbar triangle because it is present in the lower back that is in the lumbar region. So, when you will see in the lower back, here you can see there is a triangular area. Now, this triangular area is known as lumbar triangle of pettit. Now, this lumbar triangle of pettit, one side bounded by this muscle which is latissimus dorsi, one side it is bounded by the external oblique and in the lower part, the base is bounded by hip bone. So, when you will see the boundaries, the front boundary is posterior border of external oblique. You can see that this is the posterior border of external oblique. You are seeing this boundary on my right posterior compartment. Now, here you are seeing, so this is the external oblique anteriorly and this is the posterior border of external oblique. So, this posterior border of external oblique is forming the triangle and we are talking about the right side. Behind it is formed by the lateral border of latissimus dorsi. Base is formed by the iliac crest and the apex is the meeting point of external oblique and latissimus dorsi. So, this point is become base, uh, apex. And what is the floor? Now, here you can see the muscle is not visible here rather than you are seeing a black color area. Now, this actually is covered by a one more muscle which is deep to the external oblique and that is known as internal oblique. So, the floor is formed by internal oblique. So, what is the clinical importance of this lumbar triangle? The clinical importance of the lumbar triangle is that it is a site of herniation. Sometimes the hernia will come out from this triangle and this is known as lumbar triangle of pettit. So, it is a triangle in the lumbar region. Now, there is one more triangle, but that triangle is in the near to the chest wall that means in the upper region. So, on the back you will find two triangle in relation to the uh, latissimus dorsi. One is in the lower part, one is in the upper part. Now, in this upper part that is near to the chest wall, you are having the triangle here. And we have talked about one triangle that is the lumbar triangle in lower part. Now, when you will see this triangle, now this triangle is known as triangle of auscultation. This triangle is triangle of auscultation. Now, in this triangle, the lower boundary is formed by the latissimus dorsi. You can see this is the latissimus. So, lo lower boundary is formed by latissimus dorsi muscle. The medial boundary, now this is the medial boundary which is formed by the trapezius. So, medial boundary is formed by the trapezius, lower boundary is formed by latissimus dorsi. Now, what about the lateral boundary? Now, lateral boundary is formed by scapula and rhomboidus major. So, this is your rhomboidus major lower border and here you will have some part of the scapula. 
So, in this way the triangle is formed. Now, deep to this triangle you will have the chest wall. So, which ribs you will have 6th and 7th rib or you can say 6th intercostal space. Now, deep to this triangle on the left side. Now, see you are right now seeing the right side of my back. Now, suppose this is the right side of the back and you are seeing here. But the same triangle is present here on the left side also. Now, when you will auscultate on my left auscult, uh, this triangle of auscultation, if you will keep the stethoscope here between the 6th and 7th rib uh, just adjacent to the trapezius that means in the triangle of auscultation sometimes if there is a obstruction occurs you are able to feel the splash of shallow, shallow liquid in case of esophageal obstruction clear. So, auscultation triangle importance is that on the left side you are having the cardiac end or upper end or the cardiac orifice of the stomach. And on this auscultation triangle, you are able to hear the splash of the swallow liquid. So, there are two triangles which are related to the latissimus dorsi. Near the lower end, you have the lumbar triangle which is site of herniation and near the upper part, this is the triangle of auscultation. Now, what are the deep muscles? So, I told you that once you will cut the trapezius, you are having the three deep muscle from above downward, levator scapuli, rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major. And all these three muscles are inserting on the medial border of the dorsal surface of scapula and they are arising from posterior side. And you, if you will see the levator scapuli, it is taking origin from the spines of the uh, transverse process of the cervical vertebras while the rhomboidus minor and major coming from the midline and all these three are supplied by the dorsal scapular nerve and dorsal scapular nerve is coming from C5. So, in this way we are now able to understand what do you mean by axioappendicular muscle, how the axioappendicular muscles are divided into the superficial and deep group, what is the origin of the trapezius and latissimus dorsi, what is the difference between the origin of these two muscles what are the actions of these two major muscles on the back and what do you mean by the triangle of auscultation and lumbar triangle of patates. So, this is all for today's class. Thank you.